Good morning class. You are welcome to this section of the African Society Lecture. And I am glad to meet all of you again this week. And we need to go into the subject matter. In our previous lecture, we discussed what is meant by the belief systems or the, the outlook or the religious outlook of African societies, which we will term the world view. We've learned a lot and we realize that though when we talk about African religion, we are not talking about a homogeneous affair. We talk about, we are not talking about a homogeneous affair, but some peculiar themes are shared in common. And one of the issues that we drew attention to is that all African traditional religions are based on certain principles, and those principles are common across board. One of it is they believe in the existence of the supreme being. They also believe uh, they believe in the existence of the deities. That the deities are the vice regents of the supreme being, because God is there, but He's not very much active in their situations, in their uh, in their issues. He's not present to be um, contacted. And so they believe that the deity seems to be the vice regent, the powerful being that were created by the supreme being, that in his absence, they act. They act for the welfare of the community. And also when it comes to disciplining the community, they also act on his behalf. So they worship these supreme beings. They worship the supreme being. I'm talking about worship. They give reverence to the supreme being because they intend will carry via prayers and etc to the supreme being then they also believe the existence of ancestors the ancestors have to do with the departed so people have departed from the family who lived long who gave birth and they lived well their lifestyles were worthy to be emulated to be copied by the younger ones or the younger generations these folks were become venerated or they are ushered into the ancestral realm and they are venerated from time to time they are even offered food which we can call worship uh, or we can call sacrifices in order to um, receive the receive the prayers of the of the immediate family and breathe life upon them in other not life not in terms of giving it but life in terms of affecting situations around them positively that it goes well with the traditional folks so for instance when people need children and they could not have children through the means the scientific mix that we all know of they are offered some form of sacrifices to have mercy upon these daughters or these sons or these folks within the immediate family uh, family yes to receive such children and they, they also believe in the existence of spirit but they believe that this spirit live in trees they live in stones they live in water bodies they, they inhabit elements they inhabit the natural things that they find around the environment so if you see africans traditional african worshiping trees it should not be news to you because that's what they believe that spirit entities live in these trees spirit entities live in water bodies so they worship water water bodies or they offer sacrifices to water bodies or you can even talk about mountains they believe that there are some spirit entities powerful beings that live within these mountains and they can be worshipped they also believe that even though they inhabit those particular elements, they can also leave those elements and inhabit other uh, other elements. So go around the whole of Africa, you see these practices in place. You can see a place where probably even a plane might have crashed. They believe that there are some powerful forces that are there that need to be revered, that need to be um, offered sacrifices to from time to time. So their power or the, uh, yeah, the, the, the sort of power the, the wild is what caused them to even cause havoc within the society. And Africans will find reasons to go and bow, to worship, to offer sacrifices to these spirit beings. 
and the spirit being can also inhabit animals so there are certain animals that are regarded as totems in within african traditional communities they are revered they are worshipped they are pacified and this is not only common to africans but many many eastern religions also believe in some of these practices but we are talking about africa so we are dwelling on african traditional uh, issues then they also believe in magic magical practices so they use magical means to protect themselves most of it is against witches or witchcraft practices africans the number one thing they fear is not an enemy from somewhere it is not an enemy without a body they believe that enemies are personified they have bodies they carry bodies around one of it is Sasabonsam. And when we talk about Sasabonsam, which we will translate into English as devils, that is from the Akan palace, does not mean a devil that we cannot see with our eyes. They, are actually, they carry human bodies and they can reveal themselves at night to cause havoc. And they also believe that witches are harmful. So they use these magical means to control witches, to control wizardry and etc. And acts of witches, they call to protect themselves over from them or against them. So these are practical elements or belief systems you will find in all of Africa. From one religion, one particular region to the other, you will find it. It is within all the African cultures across board. But the language or the forms through which these are practiced, they are different. Though we don't have a homogeneous traditional belief, the themes are the same and they are similar from one jurisdiction to the other. So today we want to look at worship. So when we talk about worship in traditional African society, then our focus will have to come to how they relate with the deities. Now, some Europeans, with the advent of Christianity in the 15th century, when they began to come with the gospel, also through the means of trade and etc., when exploration were ongoing, so many things have been said about African people and oftentimes they have been termed as people who don't believe in the supreme being they don't know god and etc and one famous european um, uh, german called westerman dierich westerman dierich said of africans that they don't know god right god to the africans is not the object of religious cult so he is not the reason why they will gather to worship, right? He is not the object of a religious cult and is of a small or almost no significance in practical religion. So they do not give it so much attention that you can begin to concentrate on Africans' uh, religious practices as uh, one that merit. Uh, to be called a religious practice because they focus on the worship of God. And of course, this is, um, this to some extent is true because when you talk about uh, the worship of God, the worship of God, Africans do not worship God directly, right? And there's nowhere in traditional African society where a shrine is set aside for God. Or for the supreme being to wash to be worshipped unlike we have for churches we have for islam we have mosques we have other religious temples for other major world religions that is not known in traditional africa where the supreme being is contacted or is dedicated to have a time to be revered or to be contacted and be worshipped there's nothing like that in traditional african society so you talk about worship in traditional African society, then you are talking about the responses, many, many, many or different forms of various forms of responses of Africans to their spiritual world, of which they are much aware. They are much aware of their, the, the reality around them. And so they, they take cognizance of it and they revere it. And these is expressed through the various forms 
through many words many many words and when you talk about worship worship is eternalized in different arts and sayings worship is not done in the ways that we know of when it comes to uh, major religious bodies how they carried up uh, worship to have a day set aside for one particular deity or to the supreme being if it comes to uh, islam or christianity that they will revere and then they will worship him and dedicate that particular uh, place of a place of worship to him that is not that in africa this is eternalized in act their behaviors their sayings and worship can be formal and it can be informal it can be regular or extempore it comes out from nowhere you see them exhibiting that tendency of worship and worship also takes form takes a communal form or it can be an individualized it can be individualized or it can be communal and then it is centered around rituals and then ceremonies it is centered around rituals and ceremonies so talking about worship african worship is being reg is regulated by their immediate needs and then inherited practices that is how they regulate their worship what is the immediate need what is the current situation what are the problems what are the challenges that the african is facing in the now in the moment it shows the kind of worship it shows the kind of the, the the how their worship will be regulated and then in addition to what they have inherited so the two are meshed together so worship is offered rather than uh, meditational it is an offering it is something they offer it is not something that they sit back reflect on ponder over and then think out or think through some kind of element of greatness or through some form of a spiritual exercise it is something they can offer and they offer it through external forms right through the body through speaking so through the external means is the use of the body and they speak it out right they speak it out for themselves and also for the spirit so it's something that is lived worship in traditional african society is a lived experience it is something that is outside so worship when it comes to the african folk or traditional folk is not something that you just sit down and reflect on no you offer you offer it rather than to meditate on it in christianity in uh, islam in buddhism in shintoism there's a reflection right the people will meditate who sit down and reflect they go into a reflective mood and sometimes it calls for some form of spiritual exercise to be conducted in africa that is not known so worship is a spontaneous expression of man's experience right of the divine being spontaneous it is something that comes out as a result of his experience with the supreme being or the environment so he reacts accordingly and this is considered to be the ultimate reality of the african people worship the term worship is not known in many african uh, many in the languages of many african folks when they talk about worship in some african languages and then you are talking about sacrifices you are talking about prayer or you are talking about ritual performance or you are talking about making an offering right this is what is carried out in some of the languages let's talk about the gun for instance they will talk about uh, soli or solemon so pray or what soli let's pray and it has the sense of worship and that is worship because there's no language in the gun language 
uh, there's no word in the Ghana language or no term in the Ghana language that is that captures the term worship. So the closest is prayer, and the prayer there means worship. Now, these words describe things and actions which are directed towards God and spiritual beings. So the things and the actions that the traditional folks must direct towards the supreme being is what is related in the terms themselves. So worship can also be defined as a means of renewing contact between people and God. Right? People and God. Or between people and then the invisible world. That is worship in the African communal understanding or in the traditional African traditional African culture, cultural understanding. It is about maintaining contact. So if that contact is broken, you find a way of renewing it. And these are renewed through some form of performances or acts of worship to keep alive the contact between the visible and then the invisible world or between man and then the supreme being. But mind you, that as I've told you, the African folk do not relate with God directly. They relate to God through various means. God is alive, but he's not very much active in their situations. That is when it comes to traditional concept of God. Most of the concepts that we have today, they are as a result of what have been borrowed from Christianity and Islam and other major religious, uh, religion, religious backgrounds. But when it comes to traditional African society, that is worship. I'm talking about keeping a certain relationship between the invisible, between the visible and the visible alive. Man and the supreme being, that's some form of relationship must be kept alive, but this must be exhibited on the continual basis through performances, through worship, through certain elements. The background, when you talk about worship, the key elements that are employed in worship to, to show that there is worship, people are worshiping God, then you are talking about sacrifices and offerings. So the supreme being is worshipped through sacrifices and offerings. Sacrifices and offerings are important elements of worship and are the essence of every religion. They are the essence of every religion. Every religion that is known. These are of essence. But when it comes to traditional Africa, the practice of making sacrifices and offering is found all over. Whether in contemporary Africa, it's found. As I've told you, African practices are regulated in two ways, either through inheritance uh, and then as a result of the, the needs, the current needs arising. So the two are meshed. So you may find some changes in some religious practices, but the uh, the ideas underneath or the ideas lying under them remain the same. It remain the same. Sacrifices and offerings constitute the commonest acts of worship among the African people. That is the commonest acts of worship. So every African worship, every African worship, and they do it through sacrifices and then the offering. These are the commonest level of worship. So sacrifices and offerings are means of contact, right? They are the means of contact or communion between man and then the deity. So to contact the, the deity or to contact the supreme being, the means to do that is through sacrifice. It's through some form of communion. Unlike other religions, which will call for some reflection, some mental exercise, some spiritual exercise, some renunciation of some past deeds or characters or attitudes or readoption of certain new attitudes or characters and etc. In traditional African society, 
No. It's about what you can offer. So it's the offering that establishes. The sacrifice is what establishes that kind of contact with the deity. So they are the means by which relationships are maintained. So the relationship between the traditional folks and their objects of worship, that is how they are maintained, is through sacrifices and is through offerings. Sacrifices and offerings also can take the form of the shedding of blood, the blood of human beings. So if anybody told you, in traditional African practices, human blood have never been offered before, it's an utter lie. Current situations have given have have also helped their practices to take up to take shape in different forms, which may not necessarily by calling for human blood and etc. But in the past, these were active elements, elements that were used in offering or in, in, in giving offerings or in the worship of their deities. They offered human blood. Some will offer animals or birds. And then some may also offer foodstuffs. Some may offer water, milk, honey. Some may offer money. So it depends on the particular cultural groups or cultural background. But all cultures in traditional African societies have, in one way or the other, offered human sacrifices before. But given political development, modernization, and other things, we may, and then given current development in law, that is human rights issues, some of these practices um, have become obsolete. Even though we may see them on the surface as obsolete, some are still doing it underground because they do it under thick darkness and they cannot be caught. But I believe that as time goes on, most of these things may also come to an end. But human sacrifices continue to be offered in many, many African traditional religions. Then you talk about sacrifices and offerings that the people actually offer for the means of drawing the attention of God to their deeds or to their needs. So anytime you find a traditional African person, individual, woman, man, offering something to the deity, it is because he is drawing, he is attempting to draw the attention of the Supreme Being to his needs. That is a major reason why sacrifices and offerings are given, are rendered as elements of worship in African society. And then the major purpose of sacrifices and offering is to maintain right relationship. It is when the relationship are maintained with the Supreme Being that His attention will be drawn to them. So these are the nitty gritties when we are talking about worship in traditional African society. And once you talk about worship, then you also talk about singing and dancing. Singing and dancing. God is worshipped through songs and dancing. And African people are very fond of singing and of dancing. Wherever you go, wherever you find Africans, wherever ceremonies will be, will be offered, offerings will be done, rituals will be performed, rites will be given, they will not be done in isolation of singing and dancing. So the ceremonies or the rites and then the rituals that are offered, they are authenticated by these. They must be accompanied by singing and dancing. Right? And it is common everywhere. So not only is singing and dancing um, used as a means of authenticating the, the, the ceremonies themselves, but they are also used to bridge gaps, right? To bring fellows together. It incorporates what we call fellow feeling or corporate feeling. 
It builds a particular identity. It gives it 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 enhances the solidar- uh, sorry, the solidarity of the community, the oneness, the togetherness, the communal enhancement, the communal the communal fusion of the people. So singing and dancing also help to bridge that gap, to mend relationship, to bring people together. So songs are used on various platforms. They are used in pacifying or hashing babies or making marking the birth or birth initiation or marriage right or death right of a person. They must always be part of it. And this is done in unison with drums. So drums are beating. So through music, singing and dancing, accompanied by clapping of hands, beating of drums, people are able to participate emotionally and physically in the art of worship. So we talk about the participation in the art of worship, these elements are all present. In traditional worship, or when you talk about worship, in the traditional uh, understanding, you are also talking about the invocation of blessings, prayers, salutations. These are all means of worship, and they are done and practiced across the board. So that is worship, and we need to extend our minds, and then when we find ourselves within the cultural environment of Africans, we should be mindful to know that these are the Africans. This is what identifies them as Africans. Their religion, their practices, that's what identifies them. And you cannot underrate it. You cannot deal with a people sufficiently if you don't understand them. So whatever you want to do for the African people, you first of all have to pay attention to what they are doing their practices, their religious beliefs, the understanding. That is what will help you to know what steps to take if you want to aid them in anything. But you do not just stand and say, they are hungry, you want to feed them, they are suffering, you want to help them, they need education, so you want to give it to them. They may not appreciate it. They may do all of these for the African folks. They won't understand. They will not appreciate. The way they are, it will still be like that. So to deal with the core of the issue, the core of the religion, the core of their beliefs is the starting point of the growth that you can channel to the African people. To encourage entrepreneurship, you first of all have to help the African to appreciate how far he has come from with regard to his cultural practice, uh, uh, cultural inheritance and then their current response to their environment and needs. And they help them understand how that helped them build up or actually take away from them so they become retrogressive, so that they can begin to appreciate the past, the new, and see where to make the changes. But you cannot change the African from the outside. You can change him from the inside. Reasoning with him, identifying where the problem is, and making him face the issue. If you don't, whatever level of political promises or political agenda or goodwill you have for the people of Africa, nothing will stand. They need to understand how far they have come from and what is actually working against them. That is the religion. And that is the system of the worship. Their belief system. Address it. So we'll be looking at the rights and the rituals and how these practices and the form this worship takes when it comes to communal rights. Because we have two levels of rights. We have the rights of passages and then we have the communal right. We want to understand how these sacrifices, these offerings, the shape they take and then the importance, what the people derive from it, what are the benefits. We'll be looking at it in our subsequent section. Thank you very much.